All right, so, so exciting. Yes. A, that you can join me on a video. Right. Um, because I think you had as much fun as I did on this right. bike. Um, always wanted to check out an e-trike mm -hmm. because, as as you know, because it was a gift from you and the kids that I got an e-bike a few years ago. So I'm very well versed on e-bikes, but had never tried an e-trike. So we're going to walk you through the arrival of the e-trike, the unboxing of it, the setup of it, and then the experience that both Richard, myself, and several other riders right. got on the trike. Exactly. All right. Okay. So let's talk about the arrival first. Yeah. And unfortunately, in Canada, um, although we had called the number that it was to be, you know, for the delivery, we knew it was, you know, in our hometown, in the city of Ottawa, they said, oh, they'll contact you when it's going to be delivered. And then voila, the guy's knocking at the door. So fortunately, somebody was home. Yeah. And I was just, I guess, a little bit... Um, well, they had a hard time finding a driver. So it wasn't really within the control yeah. of the ad motor people. But it was the it's it was right. just the delivery. And there's just such demand on delivery. So yeah. I think that's what happened. Yeah. So there's a bit of miscoordination there. But he did show up. Yep. And he, he was really sweet. Very sweet guy. Um, but he was like, oh, you don't have to move the car. But then I thought, okay, here he is taking a pallet off the back of the truck. Right. I don't want him to leave this in the middle of the road for me or even at the curbside. So we moved the car. So, and I said, please bring it up as high up towards the garage as you could, which right. I was so glad he did, did yeah. because the front wheel wasn't yet attached. Right. And so it would have been impossible for us to like wheel it into the garage. So we, we actually wheeled it on the back two legs and then got it in right. after we got it out of the box. And then we quickly realized um, and fortunately, the manual also said this is highly advisable to have a professional bike mechanic put it together. Mm. And that, you know, f from other YouTube videos, I thought, oh, it looked so easy. You know, somebody's in the garage just like flipping through a few of the tools. And it was like, not at all like that. And nor was that the advice of our bike mechanic who so kindly yeah. came to our rescue. Right. Well, you called in Liam and I th he yeah. really did do the right things. Yes. So, uh, but you did for a while, put a, you put the basics together. Yes. I think you had some struggles with it, but it still quite wasn't ready to go prime time, uh, particularly around the handle systems and some of the other things, right? Yes. Um, certainly, I mean, because our daughter was home, she was able to help me get the front wheel right. on because um, that was definitely a two-man job. Yeah. Um, but then I just didn't feel that um, I was qualified to, to make sure that the handles, handlebars and the mechanism to ensure that the, the post of the right. handlebar was in securely. Right. That's when you called in the professionals and Liam showed up. Yes. And Liam is our bike mechanic. Who is well? Very, he is a professional bike mechanic. He's, professional. he's not just our bike our mechanic. Bike, yeah, but he, he, this is his day job. Yes. So, and he came in and he was very impressed with the bike, but it needed uh, it needed that his attention. Yeah. So, so that he was the first one to take it for a test he drive. Took it for a test ride, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, uh, he, uh, he he had a lot of fun on the bike. <laughs> he did, and and was the first one to give me my initial warning of it has a lot of torque. Yes. Um, it's a, strong, which, it's a powerful bike. Which you loved, <laughs> which and I, loved. I was a little intimidated by. <laughs> Liam loved the torque, really enjoyed it. He thought it had a lot of torque and power. He thought the bike was well constructed, so he was a thumbs up on the bike. And but he has tried a number of He tried bikes. a number of, yeah, yeah. Number of bikes, e-trikes and uh, e-bikes. So was, he knew as he was a man in the know. Yes. Okay. Now, um, before we finish the setup of the bike here, um, I want to just say something because I actually charged the battery and then I was responsible for putting the battery in right. the first time. And having, as I say, an e-bike that had a totally different type of battery and a different type of uh, battery install, I found this one to be a bit awkward. Um, I weighed it, it's 11 pounds, and I could not actually take the battery back out again to recharge um, without taking the seat off. So. That is definitely one consideration. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, that done, we went out and had fun on the bike. And if I could just add one yes. thing about that. I did kind of get used to doing the battery myself. So it does take a bit of learning to find out how to, how to install it and take it out. So there is a, there's a bit of technique 
on it. Yeah. And it is a heavy device, so make sure uh, not everybody might not want to do it themselves. I don't know, they might have somebody in the home do it. Uh, but back to the charging of the, the, the charging process. So uh, yeah. the charge lasts quite a long time. Um, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So it depends how much <laughs> how much you actually contribute to the energy of the bike, right. and yeah. uh, or how much you choose to coast. So I like coasting. <laughs> I noticed. Now, one of the first things because you know we Ottawa is not super hilly, but it does have hills. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things we notice is there's no actual locking mechanism on the bike. So it's really important to park the bike on a flat surface. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you are going to be chasing the bike. It could happen. Um, yes. It could happen. Um, so that, that's, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, unlike my e-bike that I could just lay it on its side and it stands still, um, it won't roll away. Yeah, there's no kickstand on this one, so yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> So then I think... Uh, oh, so Liam did say, and yeah. this is probably your best bet, is if you're ordering the e oh. the ad motor, important point. each right, just have it delivered to your local bike shop. That way you don't have to worry about the pallet being left behind. You don't have to worry about unboxing it. Um, you know, where are you putting it, you know, until it's set up. Because the... The professionals at the bike shop can do all that for you. And then you'd feel, you know, much safer. They just give you a call and tell you that it's ready. So now the ad motor people were actually clear in the documentation that you're best to get a professional to work on it. I agree. Then, but I didn't know that until I opened up the back pouch that had the documentation in it. It wasn't on the outside of the box. Right. Okay. So yeah. I, I would, you know, encourage people to, unless you have somebody at home who's able to receive it and assemble it and do those things, that it's probably best that you uh, arrange with your local bike shop and get a bike technician to put it together and know that it's coming. Agreed. Right. Then the next step is getting used to the bike. Right. So uh, again, we're on a bit of a slope where we live. And so it was a little bit intimidating for me, not so much for the men <laughs> in my life that tried it. Um, so we decided, at least for myself, I needed to take it to a flat surface. So we have a high school nearby with a track, and that was amazing. It was just so much you know, easier to not feel like, oh, am I going to hit you know, an oncoming car or worry about the curb? or worry about, you know, other kids on their bike or anything like that. I could just, you know, go to an open space and enjoy it. Yeah. And that would be the advice I think we'd give everybody, no matter what. Even yeah. when uh, Daniel, who was our neighbor, we invited him and he's 21 years old, a very strong young man. He was like very intimidated at the, on, on the hill and trying to get used to it. But once he got onto the flat level track, he was just humming. And then same with me when I got onto things. So I, yeah. actually my first experience was on the flat track and it was just a hoot. Uh, so rec point for the followers is that you should, when you're, your first experience on it, should be in a, a safe environment that's flat, like a parking lot that's empty on a Sunday afternoon yeah. or a track as we went on first on. So that would be a, a point to really strongly consider when you get used to this bike. Because it's about a, I would say about a 30 minute interval for you to kind of get accustomed to it. Yeah, although I have to say Richard was doing some pretty good within, um, within speed 30 seconds. Within about 30 seconds. 30 seconds, yeah. I, had it, I had it figured out, yeah. It took me a little longer. Um, but again, it seemed like both Daniel and I, having been bike riders for most of our life and comfortable on a bicycle and being in control of the speed and power, we felt like, whoa, here's this, you know, really strong battery that is happy and willing to take control of us um, so it does go um, even if you don't pedal a whole lot and you know you you get used to that and then you appreciate it when there's a heavy wind or you have a ton of groceries yeah. but you appreciated it the whole time right away yeah because there's two <laughs> ways just to quickly summarize there's two ways to get the uh, motor engaged one is just uh, have it set up with the appropriate speed and then, uh, which you'll see when you set it up, uh, but when you turn the uh, pedals, you get about one turn and then the motor kicks in and takes it from there. If you actually want to like an immediate, if you say at a stop sign and you want to move forward or you're on a hill or a grade and you're having a hard time getting the bike going, 
there's a there's a almost like a, a motorbike throttle. throttle and you just turn yeah. that guy and whoop it takes it will it will drive it forward with no effort on your part and, other than and the pulling turn. it towards you not away from you because some of us had that challenge right you make yeah. sure it goes this way not that way yeah um, so but that's fine so it's got a lot of power just warning or a, 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 both a warning and a uh, positive is that it has a lot of power yeah the other consideration is the width of the bike. So I decided I'm going to measure from wheel to wheel, and it's actually the exact same width as my e-bike um, from one handlebar to the outside of the mirror. But it just feels a lot wider, and I think it feels a lot wider when I'm going into spaces that have pillars, like two pillars, and I know I have to make that space, or when pulling up off of a, a curb, curb, curb yeah. and making sure that both wheels are coming off on the same flat part of the curb or else you're going to feel that you know disimbalance when you come off right um and it, if you're not used to that it's a it's a, it can be a little bit you know yeah again i think that's part of, the, or, part of the learning too. yeah i think the same thing applies to learning how to turn the bike and when you come to a corner uh you obviously want to manage the speed and you want to manage your balance and then there's just oh that's where there's probably a bit more learning involved time-wise to learn how to turn the thing safely uh, but you can and with just a bit of practice you can get that right again flat services controlled environment at the beginning until you get accustomed to it yeah yeah didn't take you too long, take long no. yeah we were spinning around the city going up ramps yeah. crossing bridges and then you were on these busy bike paths mm -hmm. and i think that was just your day two on it yeah, it was actually my yeah. first really long run out in the open, and I was totally comfortable right, the, right from the get-go. So then we decided we'd actually see how it was doing something functional, like grocery shopping. Right. So that was actually really fun, because yeah. oftentimes I'm the one doing the grocery shopping on my e-bike and having to deal with my saddle bags and you know just putting them on and taking them off. But with this wonderful big back to it, to this trike, it was just like, slip them in and go yeah it was it was yeah. that was uh, i generally don't wouldn't hop on a bike to go to the store but, but I would, you generally just, avoid the I thought. Generally avoid the, the <laughs> thought of that i generally get in the car and i would say that this is one of the positives is that you know it reduces your need for a car i think uh because you can freely get on this thing and it's obviously environmentally friendly more environmentally friendly than most cars gas driven cars that is uh, but uh easy to park obviously park right in front and just make sure you lock the uh, wheel uh if you're going in by yourself so um and yeah. i think for the first time in quite a few years because i have been a big biker for many years yeah. and richard used to be a biker um sorry i say used to because he doesn't choose it as his go-to activity at all anymore except with the e-trike he actually feels like a biker again even though i keep reminding him that he's not doing a whole lot of work when he comes back hungry and thinks he should have an extra <laughs> serving because he was working so hard riding beside me mentally uh, i was working hard. yes <laughs> mentally, like you're thinking you know a lot uh, so there was work going on yeah i challenge yeah. you on okay that. <laughs> The brain, the brain does consume a it number does, of calories. Yeah, very, a yes. lot, actually. So it's what I hear. Very good. <laughs> um, so aside from that, any other considerations you could think of? Oh, I think I think uh, just I think in terms of the shopping, I found it. So we did that, and then I think then we ended up uh, having other people try the bike. We had uh, yes. we had to actually at one point go back to. I think what we found was that the handlebars were still too far forward and they were causing a bit of a reach forward even on me and I could see you could see in the video where I'm shooting on the first go round I'm probably uh, flex forward a bit too much so we had Liam actually we had a, we had a round two of Liam just tuning it which again is another thing you might find yourself doing is that you ride it for a while and they'll go back a few days later to that technician and have them tuning what we did was we had him shift the uh, handlebars forward and that actually, I think, helped quite a bit, both for you and me. Yeah. And then, uh, then we had uh, we invited another rider. I think that's where Melanie showed up. I think we had yes. another person, which is a story unto itself. And we'll just let Melanie tell her story because she does such a good job of it. She does. Yeah. Very special case, and she actually enjoyed it quite a bit. So 
Melanie, I know it was like a one-off of just throwing you on the bike. Mm -hmm. How did it go? It was amazing. It was really, really fast. I have not had the chance to go that fast in a very long time. So it was really lovely to be able to do that. Awesome. Maybe you want to just share with the viewers why I asked you or mm -hmm. because most of the people that I invited on, um, well, actually one was 21, younger than you. And you are 24, soon to be 25. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yay. So I'll let you share however much you want to share. Mm -hmm. And you're obviously holding a cane I and am. it's not an e recent ankle sprain. I know. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I have ankylosing spondylitis, uh, which is a type, a rare form of arthritis. And it's even more rare for a woman to have it and even more rare for uh, multiple generations to have it. Um, and so I actually have, there's been three generations that have had it now. In your family? Uh, in my family. My mother is the most recent one. She recently got her diagnosis, but oh. I got an early diagnosis and I'm a, much more severe. I uh, started with Lyme disease at a very young age and it kickstarted this disease a little bit faster than it would have for the other women in our family. Mm. Um, and sadly, it was it's such a rare condition. It's extremely difficult to diagnose, especially in women as they feel it more in their hands and their feet. Originally, it was thought it might have been rheumatoid arthritis. But um, after getting my x-rays done and my MRIs done, they realized my left SI joint is completely eroded and my right has active spondylitis. My spine has been shrinking and it's completely inflamed. It looks like a Christmas tree almost. Oh, so, so it has been bringing a lot of challenges to us. And uh, as a family, you know, now seeing all the different things, we've had to make adaptations to our life just to be able to have me be able to be a little more able-bodied in the house. So your aunt, who's my best friend, mm -hmm. um, did happen to, to mention your challenges. And I went, well, I have something for her to try. <laughs> so I'm really excited that you're able to try it and looking forward to have you try it on different, you know, um, environments. You know, we'll mm -hmm. do some more trail riding here and then maybe hit a little bit of the roads. Sounds good to me. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. And I understand your mom has plans for you taking it somewhere else as well. Yes, she was um, saying that we'll probably take it to a, a farm we're hoping to buy. Um, we were kind of on the fence about possibly buying it because I wasn't going to be able to get around a lot and I wasn't going to be able to kind of hold my own on the farm and I was mm. feeling very sad about that and I didn't want to do it. Um, and then with the thought of having this bike, I can get around and be more mobile and be more useful to the farm. and being able to kind of hold my own and feel very proud about that as well. Well, thanks so much for sharing today. No problem. Thank and, you very uh, much for uh, letting me try this out. Of course. Let's get back on the bike. Sounds good. In regards to this e-trike from AdMotor, the only thing I'd have to say is I was a bit taken aback that everybody seemed to enjoy riding it <laughs> but me. And I think it's because I have a really tiny behind. Well, I'd like to think I have a tiny behind. I'm not very big. I'm what people would say relatively petite, 113 pounds, five foot one. And the seat is rather wide. And so if when I was sitting on the very edge of the seat I liked it but when I was trying to sit back into the seat to experience the back support my legs were actually hitting the seat and I couldn't extend my leg properly so um, as my bike mechanic said I'd probably if I was going to keep this bike for myself and my use um, I would switch the seat to a more narrow seat for myself but I think it's going to be hard for me to take it away from Richard because he totally loves this right. bike. Yeah. Um, and I'm fine with the seat. Seat fitted me quite yeah. well. Yeah. And for everybody else, actually, the seat was wonderful yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So any other things you want to comment on before you get to my... No, you go for it because you loved it so much more than I did. So I'll just summarize what I, I felt positive about it. And so, first of all, I thought that it really gave me a good, strong 
road presence. I felt very comfortable on the road. Uh, driving, I felt that I was more, I was higher. I was just seeing more present on the road. So I think other car drivers could really notice me out there. So I just, it just gave me a bit more sense of safety inside the bike lanes. Um, certainly it's a great touring bike. That'd be my second point. I just found it. I could just go on a touring session on a Sunday and, uh, it just allowed me to cruise and accelerate whenever I wanted to. When it came to climbing hills or grades, or the, the, the bike just kind of uh, you know, hit a grade and then we had to get out of it, you could just turn the thing on and it would just move forward just for that burst of energy that you needed. And can I add to that? Yeah. In terms of just as a good cruising bike or see, you know, going for a ride, is that I noticed when the little ducklings were there that I had to literally stop and get off my bike so I can watch the ducklings. And Rick, Richard just sort of slowed down and was still had a had a nice seat, you know, sort of to to watch them move beside right. him. And that was kind of nice, actually. Yeah, yeah it was, it was very nice. That was an experience. Uh, it was also um, kind of an interesting experience driving up to Starbucks and ordering a coffee, uh, which they then said, uh, sorry, sir, you need a car to go through the drive through not one of whatever you're driving there. But anyway, they still accommodated me, which is very kind of them. <laughs> but just uh, if you see that. Diamond Storage did, however, let you the in. The storage people, when I drove in, they, they did let me in. So that was kind of <laughs> cool to go to where we have our storage and our some of our, our stuff. So I was able to get in there fairly easily. So um, all these things that normally within a three mile radius or five mile radius of home, Richard would have jumped in the car. Oh, right. And so I said, let's ha let's have you try all these things. And you did just great with it. Yeah, I was very comfortable and I keep doing it. So I do it again. Um, so I think uh, finally, uh, well, not finally, but the carrying capacity allowed me to in the back, which you'll see, allowed me to do things functional like groceries or go to or to our storage area, and so just instead of the car. So it really, I feel is a car displacement for us. Um, I think it encourages non-bikers like me to be bikers, although Margaret to, doesn't to think feel, I'm a biker. To feel like a to biker. Claim to be a biker no. um, <laughs> uh, out there in the world, and then. Um, if, 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 I think two more things is obviously if you're, uh, it's, it, it's obviously m more uh, supportive of the environment and environmental things because it's, you're taking a gas car off the road for a period of time. I just felt it was like a lot of fun. I just had a lot of fun driving the thing and put a smile on my face when I was driving the thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of the thing for the right person. I think there's just a few things we recommend for people, which we talked about earlier in terms of like, staging it properly and making it, you know, for the configuration set it up so that just, I really focus on getting it set up properly so you can actually just go and enjoy the bike. And I also encourage people to take their time learning how to use it because it is a machine and like any machine it takes a bit of learning to kind of get used to, 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 and get comfortable and feel safe doing it in terms of turns and things like that. Again, go to a safe environment, a parking lot that's on a Sunday afternoon, and you'll be fine, spend a bit of time on it, and just build up your skills with the thing. So that's my feeling on the thing. Great. Yeah. So hopefully with that, you have a good sense of what's involved if you pursue getting an ad motor. Um, they also have great bike colors and a great assortment of different bikes. <laughs> so I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope that should the uh, Grand Tam or any of the other ad motor bikes be in your life, that you have many safe and happy miles on it. Mm -hmm.